Many people find bonds confusing and difficult to understand, but you can't ignore them because your pension will almost certainly contain bonds, particularly if you are in the default fund. In this video, I will explain the basics of how bonds work, the differences between buying individual bonds versus buying bonds in a bond fund, and finally, how you calculate the yield or interest you will get from purchasing individual bonds when you are building a bond ladder. Hi everyone, welcome back. The easiest way to get your head around exactly what a bond is, is to think about it as a loan that you are giving to the issuer of the bond. In this case, let's assume that the issuer of a bond is a government. So here's how it works. You lend money to the government by buying a bond. And in return, the government promises to pay you regular interest. It's a bit like having rent on your money. The full amount that you originally gave them you'll get that back at the end of the bond term, which is known as the maturity date. The amount of money, the loan that you are given to the government, is called the principal, and the annual rate of interest on a bond is called the coupon. The coupon is expressed as a percentage of the face value of the bond, which is often called the par value. The key terms to understand about bonds are, number one, the bond issuer, the coupon rate, the maturity date, the yield, and the price. Bond example. Let's say you invested £10,000 in a 10-year government bond. Each year, the government will pay you 5% of your investment in interest, or £500. And at the end of the 10 years, your original £10,000 investment is returned back to you. Government bonds are considered to be a safe investment because governments are usually reliable about paying back their debts. Now, companies also issue bonds known as corporate bonds and the way that they work is exactly the same as government bonds. But corporate bonds are generally riskier because there is a chance that that company could go bankrupt and that you'll never get your original money back. The level of risk in corporate bonds depends on the company's corporate health and their credit rating. So as a result of the higher risk, corporate bonds often have much higher yields than government bonds. And bearing in mind that each type of bond that's issued, each type of corporate bond, each type of government bond, has different terms and conditions attached to it. This leads me to an important point that many people don't appreciate, which is the difference between buying bonds through a bond fund versus buying individual bonds and holding them to maturity. If you buy a bond which matures in five years and that bond issuer doesn't default, then you'll get the full amount back in five years time in addition to the interest that you were getting along the way. The only loss is the potential relative loss from not investing that money somewhere else where you could have got better return. But if you hold bonds in the form of a bond fund, then that fund will be constantly rebalancing, buying new bonds as older ones mature. It can be really hard to keep up with bonds that are in your bond fund. And of course, you don't have control over the bonds within the fund. So let's go into a bit more detail about the bond market that will help you understand the difference between buying bonds directly and buying bonds in funds. Let's look at the primary bond market. This is where bonds are strictly traded between the original issuer of the bond, such as the UK Government Debt Management Office, and the bond purchaser before listing on a live exchange. And you can own the bond until the bond maturity date if you choose to. Once the primary offering of a bond is closed, they can then exchange hands on the secondary market. They then trade on a live exchange with market prices similar to the way that shares work. And the price investors pay for bonds on the secondary market is dependent on the ups and downs of the bond market. You could pay less or more than the original issue price. Worked example of a gilt trading at a premium. Let's take the example of buying this gilt from AJ Bell that is trading at a premium, meaning it's trading above £100 per bond. So on the screen you can see the basic information about this gilt and let's assume that you want to invest £10,000. How much gilt do you actually get? So gilts trade in £100 face value units but you're buying at a premium of £101.93. This would buy you 98.06 units but you can only buy whole units so you'll likely get 98 which costs £9,989.14 at the value that this gilt is trading at. So what income will you get? As we know, the coupon for this gilt is 4.5% per year, and it's paid in two halves, that's 2.25% every six months. So you will get £220.50 every six months, and you'll keep receiving this until June 2028. 
What happens at maturity? On maturity in June 2028, you'll receive the face value back for this guilt at £100 per unit and you've bought 98 units so you'll get £9,800 back. But remember, you paid £9,989.14, so you will get back slightly less than you paid. To calculate the effective yield, because as we know, you paid more than the face value, your effective yield is lower than 4.5%. It's called the yield to maturity. So in this case, the yield to maturity would be closer to 38 to 4%, depending on the settlement date and accrued interest. Accrued interest is an important factor when buying bonds on the secondary market because if you buy between the coupon dates, you'll pay the seller any accrued interest since the last payment and you'll get it back in full in the next coupon date. So on the screen right now is a summary of the calculation that we've just gone through for this guild that is trading at a premium. Let's look at an example of a bond that is trading at a discount. You can see the information of an example that's available right now on AJ Bell of a gilt that is trading at £68.66, pence, a significant discount. You can see that the coupon rate is 0.625% per year, but going through the same calculation, the effective yield to maturity of this bond, which matures in 2035, is effectively 47 to 5%. So this illustrates that when you are looking at purchasing gilts on such platforms, the important information that you need to know is the price that you will pay for that gilt, the price it's trading at, in order to work out the yield to maturity based on the coupon rate. And of course, you'll want to know the maturity date, which is the date that you'll get your original investment back. You might be able to find some gilts that look particularly appealing if they are trading at a significant discount. How bond prices relates to interest rates. In terms of aggregate value, the bond market is much larger than the stock market. Now bond prices and interest rates move in opposite directions. If interest rates rise, bond prices fall and vice versa. So why is this? The very simple answer is because when interest rates rise, you can earn better rates from cash as compared with bonds. This forces new bond issuers to offer more appealing coupon rates in order to attract investors due to the increased risk of bonds as compared with cash. And with less demand for the existing bonds that were issued with fixed interest at a lower coupon rate, it ultimately leads to price falls of those previously issued bonds. So just like shares, bond prices are subject to the principles of supply and demand. The opposite is true when interest rates fall, the market value of bonds tends to rise. This is because the existing bonds on the market become more appealing and more valuable to investors because new bond issuers are offering less favourable interest rates and you now earn less money from cash in the bank as compared with bonds that were previously issued at a higher coupon rate. And this causes bond prices to rise, but as a bond price rises, its yield falls. So when interest rates rise, investors will be stuck with bonds that are yielding below market rates. And so the greater the time of maturity for that bond, the greater the interest rate risk that that investor is exposed to. The bonds in your pension. Your defined contribution pension, as I've covered in many videos, is highly likely to include a significant portion of bonds, particularly if you are in your pension platform provider's default fund and you are within, say, five years of your target retirement date. How do you know if you are in the default fund with your provider? Well, very simply, if you haven't chosen any investments yourself, if you have haven't made any decisions about the investments within your pension, then you are in the default plan. And the bonds within your pension are usually in the form of bond funds. Hopefully you are now much clearer on exactly how bonds work and importantly how to buy individual bonds as opposed to purchasing through bond funds, which is the usual way that people own bonds in their pension. As a reminder, there's a link in the video description where you can request a free call with me. Until next time, au revoir, amateur.